Hi guys and welcome to this video on composite shapes, another of my videos in this series. Uh, really good to see you. Uh, my name's Darren, otherwise known as Maths Guru. And I'm about to start, but can you do me a favor? If you haven't already done so, subscribing to my YouTube channel really does help me. Just know that people are watching. Now, I'm never going to be rich. I am certainly never going to be famous. Um, but just that click of that subscribe button means the world to me. It actually makes me continue to record these videos because then I know that I'm helping people. And I'm just there to try and make maths interesting and fun and funky for you. So what are we doing in this lesson? Well, there's my learning objectives. We're going to understand what a composite shape is. We're going to identify regular shapes which make up those composite shapes and then find areas and perimeters of said composite shapes. Oh my goodness, it sounds fun, doesn't it? No, not really. Come on, I'll make it fun, I'll make it interesting. Now, in the previous video, and you have watched the previous video? No? Well, head over to mathsguru.com as well where you can sign up for free and there are downloadable notes. Yes, these notes behind me are able to be downloaded with all my annotations. And there are sorted by textbook. You can find all sorts of stuff on there as well. Exam questions, blah, 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 blah. Um, most interesting thing you may do today, particularly if you're home learning online. So we, in a previous video, we looked very much at this idea of finding uh, areas of sort of basic shapes. And I, in the previous video, did all the areas for you. The new ones uh, were this one here, which was the kite, where the area was a half xy, and likewise here for my rhombus, but we've met most of the rest of the shapes before. Now, knowing the areas of these basic shapes means we can combine them to make something called a composite shape. And so a composite shape might well be a simple house. Now, I desperately wanted to be an architect. <laughs> But then I found out that I had to spend like 12 years in uh, uni and I decided that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so I became a teacher. Yay! Spent the rest of my life in school. So if I was going to draw a simple house, this is my simple house. Can you see that? Brilliant, isn't it? There you go. There's the, well, it's floating now for some reason. I've got a little bird and let's draw a tree. I didn't say I was a good artist. I'm just saying there's my house. Got no doors, no windows. But this here is an example of a composite shape. Why? Because I've got a basic shape here, which could be some sort of quadrilateral, and I have a triangle together. And by putting them on top of each other, I've made a different shape. If I wanted to find the area of the front of that, maybe I was gonna paint my house, then I would effectively be going, oh, I don't know, there's no formula for the area of a house. What am I gonna do? Well, you would break it up into each of its individual shapes. So I'd find the area of my quadrilateral, I would find the area of my triangle, and basically add them together. And that's the premise for this whole video. So if we find the perimeter and area of a composite shape, now you've got to be careful, perimeters and areas are tricks, right? Areas are probably the easiest thing to find out for all of these shapes, yes? So if we look at this shape on the right, can you see the two composite shapes? Can you see the two basic shapes it's being made up from? Now you are perfectly able to add construction lines or lines to sort of differentiate or split up the shape. They don't mean anything as long as you don't try and work out the perimeter of that bit. But I now know that I have this shape here, which is a quadrilateral, and this shape here, which is half of a circle, right, or a semicircle. Now, a great thing is if it's half of a circle, it's really a sector, and we can find areas of sectors, we can find perimeters or arc lengths of sectors um, really, really easily. So, a right, composite shape shows a curveball in which we can find the perimeter and the area. Now, the area is the shape inside, but you've got to be very, very careful that when you work out the perimeter, we do the 10 plus the 5, we'd add on this arc length, and that five there. Lots of people, strangely, then try and add on this middle line here. Well, that middle line for a perimeter is not on the outside of the shape. And perimeter, you only add the outside of that shape. So let's do what uh, we can there. So let's, first things first, let's work out the perimeter. All right, so the perimeter is going to be, well, the first thing I need to do is work out the arc length of that half circle. So we're gonna work out the arc length. And using a formula I've had before, I know that that's the fraction of the circle. So that's 180 degrees, because I've got half a circle, out of 360 degrees of the circumference, which is 2 times pi times i. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, there is a video. Go back and have a look. But I've got a fraction of a circle and a fraction of that whole circumference. So there we go. So it's 180. So that's a half times 2 
times pi times, oh no, I don't know the radius. What's the radius? Not give me the radius. Well, actually they have. This length here, this 10 centimeters, is the same as that length there. So that's 10 centimeters, which just so happens to go from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle, but through the middle. And yes, as such, that means it is a diameter. Yep. So we now know if the diameter is 10, the radius is gonna give me five. Now, a half of two gives me one, and so that gives me five pi. If you remember from a previous video, I like to leave my answers in exact value. So five pi. So I now know that whole section there is five pi. How am I now gonna find the perimeter of my shape? Well, the perimeter becomes equal to five pi plus this length here, which is five, plus the 10, plus the other five, which gives me five pi plus 20, and I can fire up my calculator to give me a value of that, and we'll do five pi plus 20, hit enter, and we get the value of 35.71 centimeters, and just centimeters, not squared, because it's just a length. What can we do now? Well, we can find the area. So we know that the area is that of his two individual shapes again, yeah? So this was the arc length of the circle, and then we added on the outside, the three outsides of that quadrilateral. So now let's work out the area of the quadrilateral. Notice what I do there. I put that little equal sign, or that little box just to tell me, and I know the area of that is base times height, which is five times 10, which is 50, centimeters squared. Finished? Nope, because I also need to work out the area of half the circle. So the area of the semicircle, and again, is a half of the area of a whole circle. And the area of a whole circle is pi r squared, so that becomes a half times pi times the radius. It's still five, but it is five squared. Bring up my calculator. And what do we get? We get, yep, so let's move it over so I can see it. Thank you very much. We get 0.5, which is a half, times pi, times 25, which gives me the value of 39.5, uh, sorry, five, what am I doing? 2699, dot, 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 dot. Now I'm leaving the dot, dot, dots there because I'm not at my final answer. And you only round for your final answer. So I've got the area of the semicircle, I've got the area of the square, so we add those together. So therefore, area equals, add on the 50, which gives me, now I can round 89.27, sorry about that guys, 27 centimeters and squared. Now obviously, your working out should be down the page. Yes, I'm sort of limited by how much space I have here, but generally speaking, I'm trying to show you all the working out that you do. Perimeter is the distance around the edge, and again, how would I find the perimeter of this shape? Well, if I had the dimensions, I would be finding this. Again, I'd find the arc length of this semicircle. I would find the length of this line and the length of that line and add them together. Yes, that's the perimeter. How would I find the area? Well, much like I did before. I've got a triangle. How do you find the area of a triangle? Base times height and halve it. How do I find the area of this section here? Find the area of the whole circle and also halve it. Can't do it at the moment, don't have any dimensions. But find the perimeter and area of this composite shape. Now that's like a running track, isn't it, yeah? You could have that as a running track or I don't know what that could be in real life. Basketball court maybe? Well, half a basketball court because you've got to have the other bit on. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, find the perimeter and area of this composite shape Rain, rounding the answer to two decimal places. Why don't you have a go? See if you can beat me to the answer. Now again, I know that this length here is 14, which means that that circle has a radius equals seven. Rightio. So we're gonna find the arc length first, and that's gonna give me the fraction of the circle. I've got half a circle, because it's a semicircle, times two, times pi, times my radius. Well, we know that a half of two is one, so that just gives me pi times my radius, which is seven, which is seven pi. That's the arc length, so I've got this bit here. So now I need to add it on two. So I know my perimeter now is gonna be given to my seven pi plus 17, plus 14, plus 17, which gives, and because I've gotta do it to two decimal places, 
then I know that I've got two, bring up my calculator and I'll move it over so I've got a bit of space. So we've got seven pi, we're gonna add that to 17, add it to 14, add it to 17, and give me enter, which gives me 69.99. Now, because it wants it to two decimal places, that's actually gonna round up to 70.00 centimeters. Not centimeter squared, and because it's to two decimal places, we have to put the 0 0.00. Okay, what about the area? Well, we're gonna find the area of the semicircle, which is a half of the area of a whole circle. So again, half times pi, times my radius squared, which is seven squared, which if I leave it in ordinary terms, will actually give me 49 pi on two, yes? Why? Because seven sevens are 49, and a half of 49 is 49 on two. That's one way of doing it. How do I find the area of my rectangle? Well, they've given me my two dimensions, 17 and 14, so that becomes 17 times 14 which equals, yeah, can't do that in my head, not even gonna try. Sorry guys, if you want to do it, <laughs> you can knock yourself out, me. Just use my calculator. 17 times 14 gives me 238, uh, I should have written there, centimeters squared and centimeters squared. And therefore, my total area would be 49 pi on two plus 238 which is going to give me 238 plus, uh, let's do a fraction, 49 pi, oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We certainly don't want logarithms, thank you very much. It's not gonna let me delete this, yeah it is. 49 pi divided by two, hit across and enter, and it gives me 314.97 centimeters square to two decimal places. And the great thing about these videos is you can stop them, rewind them, replay them if it didn't make sense, if I was doing, going too quickly. But did you get to that answer? Hopefully you did. One more example, yep. Okay, how are we gonna find the perimeter and area of this composite shape? Well, now we've got a quarter of a circle. So again, it's the same idea, same theory, different example. <coughs> Let's see whether we can find the perimeter. Let's do that first. We've got the arc length first. So just dealing with that semi, that, that quarter of a circle, what's the arc length? Well, how much of the circle have we got? We've now got a quarter of it because we've only got 90 degrees of it. So we've got one quarter of the circumference of the whole circle, yeah? Arc length is about circumference. So a quarter of two is actually a half times pi times my radius which is three. They told me this here because that's my radius of three. So that becomes three pi on two, and let's write that in meters. So therefore, my perimeter of my whole shape is starting at this corner here, up, three, across, three. Around the arc, we've just got that, that's three pi, oop, he says right in two. That's three pi on two, across is three, and across again, is another three. So three, six, nine, 12. 12 plus three pi on two. It wants my answers to two decimal places. And so I'm gonna fire up my calculator and we're gonna do 12 plus brup, three pi on two. Hit enter and that gives me 16.71 meters squared. Oh, no, 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 not meters squared, meters, because we are looking for a perimeter. Yeah, now we're gonna look at the area. So again, find the area of the square. Let's do that first. Well, we know it's three by three, which is nine square meters. Now find the area of the quarter circle. I know that doesn't look like a quarter circle, but again, it is one quarter of the area of a whole circle, which is pi r squared. So one quarter times pi times my radius squared, which is going to give me nine pi on four. If you don't believe me, look it up, use your calculator, and therefore my total area is gonna be nine, which is this value here, plus nine pi on four, but it wants it as a decimal. So again, I'm gonna fire up my calculator move it over again to give me nine plus, uh, nine pi divided by four 
gives me 16 points to two decimal places, 07 square meters. Now there are a lot of tricks there in uh, maths to try and trick you. Now I won't be doing the answer to this because the video is already 15 minutes long uh, and it's going to keep getting a little bit longer. But I want to talk to you about the tips and tricks. In this question here, yes, absolutely, you can look at this question and go, right, well, I'll split this shape here and I'll find this area first and I'll find that area and then I'll add them together. That's certainly one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, funnily enough, is actually to think of it as the whole square. Subtract then this little section inside. It's still two calculations, believe it or not. Here, you'd have to find one calculation for that area, one calculation for that area, and then add them together. Here, you would do one calculation for the whole area, and you would then take one calculation for the smaller area and subtract them. But the general idea is, try and see the questions in the easiest way that works for you. What about this one here? Well, again, we've got a whole circle that we find the area of, so that's calculation number one. We have a triangle inside, which is calculation number two, and then to find the area or the shaded area, you would subtract the two values, all right? Now, bearing in mind the area of a triangle, they've given you the right angle here, is a half base times height. And they're trying to trick you here. They try and trick you by thinking that that there is the base. It isn't, it doesn't have to be the base. I look for the right angle triangle and I know that I can use one of those as the base and one of those as the height. So don't fall for the trick. This question here I think is funky as. Now I'm gonna draw a really bad example of this. Uh, he says trying really hard to draw a semi-decent example. Now what I need you to realize is they've drawn in dotted lines here for a reason. Do you notice this semicircle here? Well, imagine you can slot that somewhere into your shape to make it easier for you. And actually, as it turns out, yes, I can take that semicircle out of there and slot it exactly in here, which means that that section disappears. You see this semicircle here? Mm -hmm. That actually can be subtracted. I can actually cut it out of there and stick it in here and lo and behold, it becomes the area of a square. And the reason it's a square is because those lengths there and those lengths there are the same. Now, sometimes try and visualize, well, if I take that area out of there and slot it in there, can I make my life a lot easier? Otherwise, people would have been working out the areas of squares, minus two semicircles, plus two semicircles, a lot more work than you need to. And again, linking across topics. All right, for this question here, it's a brilliant question. Again, you can pause this. If you're not using the Cambridge series of textbooks, you won't really know what these questions are and you won't have a chance to do them. But this question says, explain why that can't be five. And what it's asking you to do is return back to the idea of Pythagorean trig and say, well, hold on a moment. If I have a right angle triangle where that's three and that's three, can this be five? No, it can't because we would do three squared plus three squared to give me the value of x squared, which gives me nine plus nine, which give me x squared. So x squared would be 18 and the square root of 18 does not equal five. So that's what it's asking you to do. Can we now link bits and pieces of theory? This wasn't even a question about finding areas or perimeters. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, I am done for this video. Composite shapes are awesome. Don't get tricked. I am um, going to leave you now. I'm going to do another video for you uh, a little bit later on. But uh, if you can and haven't already done so, head over to masguru.com and sign up or YouTube and subscribe. Again, just lets me know you're watching. Um, I hope you're well. I hope you're keeping safe. Um, I'm going to call it a day. So I'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.